Oh, that's bright. Good evening, everybody. This is my Lenovo T450. So what is wrong with this, you might ask? Well, watch this. So I click the power on. Oh, look, it boots up, it's grand. So I think I'm gonna get some work done here today, finally. Yeah, wait for it to boot up to Windows. And then I can get all my work done. And then, oh, come on, don't make a liar out of me. Don't boot and actually start working. Come on, three, two. Oh, come on, it eventually dies. I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> oh, it would be just typical, wouldn't it? There you go. Thank you, thank you for not making a fool of me. T450. Okay, so what happens is it dies just like that. So the next time I press it to come on, it happens more quickly. See? So straight away, can you hear that? So press it on and it immediately dies. Now, I'm sure there's a few of you out there that are saying it's obviously a cheap battery that I've got in this thing, but just to prove it, this is the battery I've taken out put it into the mains and I'm pressing it on again all right so press it on power is on three two come on so it's starting to boot windows and it's gone again all right so it happens with the battery in and with the battery out before getting a schematic and going at this with a solder and iron or a multimeter, I wanted to plug out all of the components like the keyboard, the touchpad, hard drive, memory, and just to make sure that it wasn't one of these components that was faulty and causing the laptop to shut down. So in this video you can see I have the laptop out on the table here. Um, the keyboard and the touchpad are disconnected here and it's out of the chassis, so I press it and it goes off. It comes on initially as usual and then shuts off. So there it is shutting off, it's off again. On, off, on, off. Okay, so it's nothing to do with the keyboard or the touchpad or anything to do with the chassis. I plugged out the hard drive then, and that had no effect either, so it's nothing to do with the hard drive. Next, I went on to the memory chips, so I plug out the first memory chip, on, and off, on and off, so nothing to do with that memory chip. It was difficult to do with one hand with the other memory chip out. Now obviously it won't boot with any memory either way, but there's a diagnostic code uh, that should flash if it um, detects there's no memory. So it had nothing to do with the two memory chips either. So I took out the Wi-Fi adapter. And once again, press on, immediately off. So it's nothing to do with the Wi-Fi adapter either. I then tested to see if it was the button. So I just plugged out the little board that the button was on and jumpered it to ground to switch it on. But... If you look, you can see the fan spinning up and it's starting there. So it has nothing to do with the power button either. Because sometimes the power button can get dirty and cause some you know, faults with power on or power off. So having established that that was no issue with the power button, I put the power button back in. And then because of the nature of how, you know, this would stay on for long periods of time, then shut down. But when you would go to boot it up then the next time, it would immediately shut down. I was thinking maybe is this something terminal. So once again, power it on and touch around the board but there was literally nothing getting warm at all. So there was no indication of any terminal issue. And just one more thing that I did at this stage was to run the onboard diagnostics, but nothing came up as having an issue and I didn't really expect that it would um, because the board seems to be fine for as long as it stays on and then just shuts down completely. So uh, the most I was expecting from this was that maybe it would shut down in the middle of the diagnostic, not that it would report back on something wrong. When I first started working on this laptop, I had presumed that it was going to be some sort of terminal issue, um, given the nature that you know it comes on and stays on for long periods of time and then shuts off, and then when it shuts off, it just doesn't seem to come back on again. 
uh, but then when you leave it for another while it then comes back on again however as we've seen when I put my hand around the board there's nothing getting warm on it I had a look around I can't see any you know signs of damage or spill or anything like that so I don't know if it's going to be possible to get this one resolved however what I am going to do is I'm going to take a look at the board on this one I have taken as you can see here quite a good image of the motherboard and I have a schematic for it so what I'm going to do is starting from the power in I am going to track our 20 volts because it's a Lenovo power adapter that supplies this I'm going to track our 20 volts in and who knows we might even learn something even if we don't actually get it fixed okay I'm gonna try something new with this I've got my schematic here and I've got my motherboard here I don't know if this is gonna work but we'll use a split screen for this and see if I can follow along on both my schematic and the motherboard at the same time so who knows we might actually learn something so this is our power in this is the regular connector that they have on the Lenovo's it looks like a USB port uh, it's usually 20 volts and this is how it looks on the schematic so one two three four five pins one two three four five so we have two pins here which are one and two these two pins here come along and to ground uh, the next two pins are three and four and these are connected to our fuse which you can see here and then the tur or sorry the number five is here so it's connected to that capacitor and then goes off somewhere else I'm not sure where that is going it's probably an ID pin is it ACDC ID yeah so you can see it here it goes off on its own path so two pins here for ground two pins here onto the fuse so the fact that it's going to the fuse means that you know that it's the positive input and then the fifth pin here which is not connected to the other two here and that is our ACDC ID so the first component that it hits is the fuse so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting our 20 volts we should be getting 20 volts when we measure between our positive and our negative so I'm going to do that next now as usual we're going to start by taking a couple of voltage measurements so with my multimeter in the volts DC range I have this one set to 20 here but the voltage on this power adapter is 20.4 so probably more appropriate to have it in an auto ranging volts DC range if you have one or for this one you would put it into 200 volts DC range but what we do then is we place our black probe to ground ground is on this one here then get our red probe and we can tar start taking measurements with this so our cable is coming in here it's plugged in and it connects onto these pins as we've seen already I'm gonna mark those pins one two three four and five and we're gonna take some measurements so if I take a measurement here I find that there's zero volts at this point um, pin three and four I take measurement and I get 20.4 volts and on pin 5 I get 0 0.98 volts so let's mark those in and I'll zoom in just a little closer just so you can see it better so that's that's fine that's as we should expect we should be getting our 20.4 volts on the input here so that means our power adapter is good but the thing powers on you know most of the time so we knew that already but the 20.4 20 volts comes first onto this component here if we look at this marked F2 there's no prizes for guessing what that is that is a fuse and if you see on this fuse it's actually marked with a 7 and if we look at our schematic here it shows that that's actually a 7 amp fuse they don't usually have that written on them now there's a lot of glue and stuff on this um, I'm not exactly sure whether that's for thermal purposes or f to hold something in place but unfortunately it means that I cannot get my multimeter in to show the pins of each of these MOSFETs that are the next components in line so as we follow this through we've come, come through our fuse which is this fuse right here onto our first MOSFET now if we follow that along here that is this MOSFET here Q9 you can see that it's marked in as Q9 so that is a p-channel MOSFET I've checked that out and the component uh, data sheet says p-channel 30 volt MOSFET so we know that that's turned on when the voltage on the gate is low because I can't get in at it here I can't show you that um, but we'll just assume that it's powered on the second MOSFET if we follow this along the line is this MOSFET right here it's a sys uh, it's marked Q36 so you can see Q36 on it here 
and it is an N channel 30 volt MOSFET. Looking at the data sheet, N channel 30 volt MOSFET, uh, pulse width modulation optimized, new terminal low resistance, etc. etc. But it is an N channel MOSFET like we usually see on the entrance or on the input of these type of circuits. So this is the first part here that we can really measure the DC voltage after the fuse because I just can't get the probe in here or here in any of the pins here. But we can place it here and when I place my probe at this point, which is the drain of this MOSFET, I am measuring 20.4 volts. And this, once again, this large resistor We'll recognize this from previous videos, but this is our current sense resistor. So all we're expecting is to find the same 20.4 volts at this point. And when I place my probe here, I find 20.4 volts at this point. That component here corresponds to this one here. You can actually see it as well. There's good markings on this board which correspond exactly to the schematic. So R380, R380, and that's good. So this is most likely our main power rail. We've come in through the adapter, onto pins three and four, through the fuse, through the MOSFET, through the second MOSFET, and these obviously must be on, or else I wouldn't get my 20.4 volts here. And our 20.4 20 comes through and is present on our main power rail here. Okay, so we've already followed our 20.4 volts onto the current sense resistor, and onto this track right here, which corresponds to this in the schematic. So after it goes through R380, it's referred to as VINT20 in the schematic, which means that it is the main power rail. Now that goes out to everywhere across the board. I've checked and at 20.4 volts is available at other points on the board. Now we know obviously now that it's up and running, but it is going to shut down sometime in the next few minutes and what I want to check is is it shutting down the main power rail or is this still present when the laptop shuts down. I've seen another example on YouTube before with a similar issue that the laptop would come on stay on for a period of time and then shut down and in that scenario what they found was it was one of these input MOSFETs that was initially working but then stopped working so the solution in that scenario was to replace the faulty MOSFET. So I'm going to wait for the laptop to shut down again. Then I'm going to take the voltage measurement at this point and see is our 20.4 volts main power rail still present when the laptop shuts down. The laptop shut off after about three minutes. So when it shut off, I quickly got in with my multimeter again and took some measurements here. And what I found was that when I placed my probe to the other side of the current sense resistor, I measured the 20.4 on, uh, on that section of the circuit here. So what that tells me is it, it seems that from the adapter through the DC connector, through the fuse, through the input MOSFETs onto the current sense resistor, all that part of the circuit seems to be okay. And it seems that one of the secondary circuits is having a problem and it's shutting down the laptop. So once again, we arrive at this difficult scenario that I described before. Um, and it's something that I really need to work on. What do you do when, you know, the input section is fine? Because obviously, as we've seen from the other videos, if there's an, if there's an issue on this linear part of the circuit here, whether it be the charger, the connector port, the fuse, or one of these MOSFETs, it's very easy to work out what the problem is and quickly resolve it. It's also easy to resolve a problem if there's an obvious short on one of the secondary circuits because we can measure for that. We can inject voltage, we can flush out what part of the circuit is shorted. However, with something like this, where either you power on the laptop and it immediately shuts down, but you can't measure a short, or the laptop works fine and just intermittently shuts down, as is the case here, it's difficult to try and resolve what the issue is. I'm going to keep working on this for the week, um, but this is about as far as I'm going to take the video for the moment. What I hope that we've progressed this week is I'm liking this way of using the split screen for the schematic and the board. Let me know what you guys think about that 
and um because i'm thinking of using this method going forward i don't know if it's too confusing if the screen is too busy but my plan is to do one video a week even if like today i don't think the content is great today but it helps me at least keep the momentum going and i do pick up things as i'm doing it and get better at making the videos and doing the graphic stuff like today i think this is progress to have these two split screen like this maybe i'm wrong maybe you guys think it's too confusing but you can certainly let me know i'm going to keep up working on this like i said and see if i can progress this and just find a better technique of what to do when you're in this scenario input section is fine no obvious shorts where do you go from here i'm going to read up on it and just see if i can um contribute it more to the solution to this type of problem thanks for the comments during the week everybody i i enjoy reading them um whether good or bad um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and work on this and get something to add to it for next week's video, and I'll talk to you then.